All right, everybody. Welcome back to The Weight Room, episode two. Today, we're going to be talking about common myths of the fitness industry. So today, we're just going to talk a little bit about kind of the myths of working out and nutrition that even though they've been squashed as obviously not being true, so many people still believe that they are true, that it's kind of our first battle as professionals in the industry to to debunk these myths that um, a lot of brands that aren't really true, truly trying to help you out, um, try to sell you like quick fixes that really don't work in the long run. So first let's talk about when you go into a workout and you feel like you need to be sore every sing- after every single workout and you feel like you need to break an intense sweat and you feel like you need to be in the gym for over an hour in order to see progress or even to make it feel like you did something productive in the gym. Yeah, for myself, I, I definitely noticed that once I get into a workout, like when I start a new workout program, maybe I'll feel sore for the first week or two weeks, whatever. But then once my body gets used to that, it kind of, I still get, you know, a little sweaty and whatever, but it's not like I'm sore every time anymore. And that's kind of the way really it should be in a way you want your body to not get used to it, but you, you want... It's not a shock to your muscles anymore when yeah. you're picking up 20-pound dumbbells. Right. So, like, if you do a, a squat the first time, it's it's like, what is this whole new thing you're doing? And your body's going to freak out, and you're going to be sore for a minute. But after that, you know, the third, fourth, fifth time you do that movement you can still load it up and it can be heavy and you can feel a little soreness, but you shouldn't be like debilitated every time you work out. That's not the goal. And that right. doesn't necessarily show progress. And at a certain point, like the quote unquote soreness after a workout might be because you're doing the movements wrong. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. So if you figuring... continue to see soreness after your workouts or you're doing the same things and it's just, sore you're you're calling it sore but it might not be sore if it doesn't stop yeah it might be an injury that you're just you got from doing something wrong overuse yeah so that's another another kind of a one of the uh one of the myths we're going to talk about is the the rest thing you know yeah how rest days are really necessary for progress i know a lot of people feel like oh well i can't take two days off like what do you mean it's going to be detrimental to everything I've worked for this past month. Yeah. So one of the things I definitely look, look forward to is getting in the gym and going hard and cause I I think it's really fun, but I know the importance of what a rest day actually does for your body. And it doesn't, it doesn't kill your progress. It actually intensifies. Yeah. it, It makes you stronger. You know, you can't, you can't build something if you're break, constantly breaking it down, which is what you're doing when you're working out. Right. So you have to take that time off to where the food you put in your body is allowed to work and it can build back your muscles and it can make you stronger and you can adapt. So you can go back in there the next time and lift heavier, or do whatever you need to, need to do. Yeah, I mean, I really don't have anything other than that to say that's perfectly summed up. So make sure you're taking... You guilt-free know, rest days. Yeah, and make and also during your rest days, another thing you can do is not to just sit around on the couch. You can, you can still get up and walk around and maybe lift some things up. You know, you don't have to just yeah. be a complete like non-movement day. I, yeah, I like to take what I call active rest days, where I'll take the pup on a walk, or I'll, I don't know, do some yoga, do some stretching, where like I'm still moving around, still using my body. In good ways, but I'm just not sitting on the couch. Yeah, Yeah. I will say I definitely saw the most progress um, in my weightlifting time when I began to take breaks. And I'm not talking even two days. I'm talking like a week sometimes. Yeah. Once I would get to a place where I was like comfortable and like through like a program I kind of set for myself or a goal that I set for myself, rather than jumping into the next goal, I'd take a week off and I'd just do some light exercising. And for me, how I focus on weightlifting, maybe I would do some cardio for my, like, quote-unquote, rest week. Even though it's not full-on rest, it's not when my body, it's not 
Yeah, it's letting your, it's letting the muscles you typically use take right. a rest. Right. Right. Yeah. So just and that's another good thing too. What you said was that week long rest. Sometimes you you need a day. Sometimes you need a week. And I think if you have a good program, or somebody to at least help you out with that, they can see whenever your progress is stopping and whenever you're you know you, you just aren't looking good or even when you're not necessarily feeling good in the gym they can you know it takes sometimes another person's eye to say you should probably take a break you're you're not really in this yeah for sure um take rests and don't think that soreness is the key or the goal the goal is the program if the program that you're using says be sore every day then that's not a good program one yeah. But here's the thing. Your program should say, how did you improve, not how did you hurt? Yeah. The goal should never be to hurt your body. It's to improve your body. Right. So did you lift one more pound or five more pounds or do two more reps or whatever it may be in your program? That's where you should base your workout on being successful or or effective. Yeah. I think from that we could go into the... Lifting will make me buff. Yeah. Like just talking about the two different mindsets for car. When people think of cardio, what's the first thing they think of, in your opinion? Probably just getting skinny. Yeah. And when they think of lifting, what is it? Just getting huge. Yeah. And it's polar opposites to both of those. Yeah. You can't just strictly get buff from lifting. Unless you're just genetically inclined. Like your hormones are more yeah. likely and, and yeah. So that's that's something that 99% of people don't have to worry about. Uh yeah, getting buff and bulky it takes comes, work. Work and it takes a caloric surplus. It doesn't just come from going in the gym and lifting. Yeah. I lift I've been lifting for about a year and a half now and I would by no means call myself buff. <laughs> right. So certain people have different body types and different ways that their body shows what they've been doing. Some people get big, some people get lean, some people, you know, you 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 probably will in, in a matter of time, if you have a good program and follow it, gain some muscle and some muscle tone. Right. But that doesn't lead to you just looking like you're Jacked have no all the time. neck and yeah. yeah, and walking around with your arms you can't move them and Yeah, for sure. Which if that's what you're going for, that's cool, but most people just strictly from lifting. Won't won't have that happening. Can't a lot of people can't get that big without some kind of, you know, Extra, supplement. Yeah. And then cardio. When people think of cardio, oh I'm gonna do some cardio to get skinny. Right. Well, little do you know. Yeah. The cardio side is is I would say is better described as more of like a health benefit than a weight management benefit. One hundred percent. You know, it's a good. It's a, it, people forget the last part of cardio, cardiovascular. Yeah, it's, it's about your insides functioning correctly when it comes to cardio. Right. And I think for some people, maybe cardio is the place to start, like doing some cardio, some weightlifting. But I don't think. Well, actually, I, I don't. It's not that I think. It's that I know cardio in and of itself is not the best way yeah. to for weight loss. Yeah. So if you're looking to do that to lose some weight, you're going to lose some initial weight with cardio, but if you want to really keep those those um, results, doing some type of um, weight training is the best way to do it. I mean, I know for me personally, I think I've already said this, but like when I started lifting, my whole like physique changed. Where when I was running, it's just like, oh, well, now I can run three miles today. Two days ago, I could run a mile and a half. Whereas with lifting, you see, like, physical progress for me, which is, like, I mean, I'm not saying I'm in the gym for the physical aspect of it, but obviously I set physical goals for myself. Yeah. I remember when I was running on the treadmill for, like, 10-plus miles, I would literally just be there watching Netflix <laughs> and listening to podcasts and just getting so bored, and it was terrible. I remember <laughs> I just would, like, smell cheeseburgers and milkshakes while I was running I was getting so like I was burning all of my carbs in my body so it was like my brain was trying to tell me to eat more yeah and but it was terrible but 
it was I, worth it for the, the actual goal of it was worth it. But um, I think that brings up a good point. How you said cardio is like using you running for so long was using all of your um, new like macros and your nutrients that were in your body to help you get through those long runs. Yeah, I mean, I know a lot of people that oh, I just work. I'm gonna work out today so that on Thursday Thursday I can go on a run or I can go out and drink however many white claws I want or whatever. It's like, well, no, that's not really how that works. And then another thing is that carbs make me fat or this fat makes me fat or protein is ma- going to make me bulky. Like, so I'm just going to completely cut out this food group. Like, I don't think people realize how detrimental it is to your mental health to completely cut out a food group, but also to the progress that you want to see. Your yeah. body, like, these food groups are a food group for a reason. Your body needs these macros and micronutrients. It's not just something you can say, oh, I just, I think this is going to help me lose the most weight. Yeah, so eating a low anything diet, you have to watch out because what what are you cutting out of your diet and then what are you replacing it with? Right. You know, you could say, okay, I don't want to eat carbs, as many carbs. So, okay, first you have to look at what kind of carbs I just cut out. Did I cut out my good carbs or did I cut out, you know, my, my the things that are actually doing the damage? And then what are you going to do to replace those calories that you just lost? Are you going to increase your protein and fat intake? Because, Certain. you know, you can't just not, you can't just not eat, eat in general. Yeah. You know, just... Because you want to lose weight doesn't mean you, you don't eat. There's when you just, don't eat, your body stores the little bit that you have. And that that's where you hit your, oh, I'm not losing any weight. Why am I not losing weight? Well, you're not eating. You're not supplying your body with stuff to burn off anymore because your body has to have a certain amount of fat and carbs and protein right. to, for the inside functions to work. This is not in, related to this topic of the podcast, but if you were going to tell someone to get help with fitness or nutrition. They only had the money to get help with one. Which one would you tell them? I would say definitely nutrition. I agree. Because nutrition, what you eat literally becomes what you are. And then the next thing is that supplements are necessary. Yeah. To see any to see weight gain, to see weight loss. People yeah. believe People believe that supplements are necessary because a lot of times they're cutting out food. So, oh, well, if I'm, I'll eat this meal replacement shake rather than eating whatever. Yeah, you and know? I think another reason supplements are so big right now is because so many, there are so many more companies that are selling the supplements and so many more people on like Instagram and stuff like that are pushing them. Because they're becoming ambassadors or... Athletes, whatever. Whatever you want to call them for these companies. And they're taking them and they're taking them on their Instagram and they're saying how great they are. And not that that, you know, that... that And that's a, a thing that happens with any product. But it, I think it's just gotten so much bigger and more exposed now that social media has has basically become like a fitness, beauty kind yeah. of like Where product go. sales. Yeah funnel for sure um yeah and i think people need to be like cautious of a who they're following b the supplements they're promoting c the brand that's making the supplements yeah Yeah, we're not saying supplements are bad yeah it's just they're they're supplements they supplement yeah so you don't necessarily need to take pre-workout every day after before you work out just to get a good workout in now, if you want to take it because you're, you know, you're feeling kind of sluggish or whatever, sure, like that makes sense. Nice. Yeah. So I think Consumer Lab is the, is the one that kind of does like a review of the product, and you can kind of search on their website and stuff like that. If that's not it, then I don't know what it is, but that sounds like it's. But that sounds like. Better. I just literally looked up supplement review sites, and multiple came up. So. Go to um, do, go to multiple if you want. Like, just do your research before you put something in your body, because you just really can't. I hate to say it, but you just can't trust people's pure intentions. Are they on Instagram and an athlete or an ambassador of this company? Because 
they truly know about the product and they truly know about what your body needs? Yeah. Or are they there because, oh, They're I work out and I get paid and, yeah. Yeah, like, so um, along with that, supplements aren't regulated. By the FDA, not a single bit. So definitely finding the, a good quality brand is, is a good thing to do. The more The more people that you can find that have used it, I think the better off you are just kind of finding a a good um a good product and a good brand. Yeah. I I typically stay within within two or three brands. I wouldn't recommend any specifically for anyone because everybody has different goals and needs and Right. I think protein is a protein powder is a good general thing to use. But past that I think it depends on what you want to do, you know. Some people might yeah. need a multivitamin or might need anything you know it's just right what figure out what you need and I think going to see like a dietitian or something would be a good first step I've really been enjoying collagen lately for my skin and then I've read some stuff where it's good for your joints so I've been doing that but yeah besides, the only thing I have a, really against a lot, mo- a lot of supplements out there is the how do you see like how do you measure your progress with a supplement you know yeah like fish oil and all this other stuff, which I think fish oil is good, but how do you measure, is this working for me? Yeah, you know, know, you really can't do that unless you go to like a, uh, like a lab and get blood, get work. blood work and yeah. get all this other stuff tested before and after. And, and I think that brings up a good point that at a certain point, supplements are good and then it becomes very dangerous if you um, consume too, too much of a certain supplement like of too much of a micronutrient can be like yeah de- like no i don't want to say detrimental it to scare be, people away I mean, but it can like, be deadly like if you have too much of a certain vitamin or mineral it can throw your whole body out of whack and it's a very balanced thing and if you disrupt that balance too much you know just be careful of how much of what you're taking yeah, and I mean, if you really feel like you need to be on something, like go see a doctor, get some blood work done, <coughs> and like continue seeing them as you take the supplement. It's not something you just take for the rest of your life without consulting someone. Right. So the, one thing I would I would um, recommend is using food as a supplement. Yes. And when I say that, I, I, it sounds weird, but... What food, what good foods aren't you eating, and how can you supplement those good foods into your existing diet? Right. Like, a lot of these supplements out there are because people aren't consuming a nutrient-dense diet. They're not getting their micronutrients in within their diet, so they need to be on these supplements. Whereas, if you figure out what food has this micronutrient that you're lacking... That could make up for it, and you don't yeah. need to. And it's often a lot better to get it naturally, naturally, because yeah. the the food actually has stuff that help with its digestion or with its actual like yeah. getting used in your body. If right, so there's been a lot of things shown that taking a certain vitamin or mineral or herb or whatever by itself doesn't actually do that much, if anything, because it doesn't have those those things along with it that come in food that that actually make it work. So those are basically just a few of the myths we have for the fitness and nutrition. If you want to know more, you can definitely reach out to us on our Instagrams. Uh, You can find me at daniel.fit4beginners. And you can find me at hbowlsfit. Uh, Yeah, so just reach out to us, DM us, whatever you want to do just to kind of get some more information on any of those. Should we leave the people with a challenge today? Sure. A challenge to expand your knowledge on the supplements that you're taking. I'm not going to sit here and say everybody's taking a supplement, but I'd say something as simple as a multivitamin is a supplement. If you aren't on any supplements, then research a few of the foods you eat. You know? Yeah. What are you eating that you really don't know what's in it? Eating intelligently is our challenge for you yeah eating and supplementing intelligently responsibly yeah so do your research and then we'll be back with some more great information for you guys later if you have any other for a next episode on 
facts versus fiction, debunking things, let us know in our Instagram DMs. We would love to hear more. Yep. Contact us on Instagram. Make sure you um, follow us on Instagram, obviously. Subscribe to the podcast on Apple Podcasts, The Weight Room. You can find us on Spotify if you don't have Apple. And, you know, please leave us a review. You can't leave a review on Spotify, so if you could even just, like, send the link to one friend, that would make a world of difference. Yeah. So, Apple Podcasts, leave a review, leave a rating, share it, do whatever, you know, just anything that can kind of spread the word. Because we're, we're here for you guys. If you know somebody that wants to get into the fitness game, the nutrition game, share it with them, you know. This could be a great way for them to transition in and just feel a little bit more comfortable. So until next time, guys. Thanks for listening. <laughs> what am I supposed to say after that? I really got to be. <laughs> Goodbye. Oh. We'll talk to you next week. Bye. Bye. Guten Tag. <laughs> Buenos dias. <laughs>